<coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd, I'd like to start by thanking the uh, Chairman of the Committee, uh, Frank Lucas, and our Ranking Member Colin Peterson for the bipartisan, poem they, bipartisan tone that they've set on all the work that we do on the Ag Committee. Under their leadership, the work we, we work together to examine the issues under our jurisdiction, and we work together to develop legislative solutions to the problems we discover. Their leadership is reflected in the bill we have before us today. Over the past two years, the General Farm Commodities and Risk Management Subcommittee has heard from two commissioners, the exchanges, and SROs, market participants, end users, Ford regulators, on a broad cross-section of issues facing the CFTC. The testimony questions that <clears throat> we heard form the foundation of what has become the Customer Protection and End User Relief Act. True to its name, the Customer Protection and End User Relief Act makes important progress in protecting Main Street. We strengthen safeguards against another MF Global or PFG Best problem and significantly reduce the damage a failed FCM can inflict on its customers. We also protect end users from being roped into regulation, reporting, or regulatory requirements that are inappropriate for the level of risk they, <coughs> they oppose on financial markets. It's clear that end users did not uh, cause the financial crisis. They do not propose a systemic risk to the financial markets, and they should not be treated like financial entities. As we drafted this reauthorization, we also examined the internal organization and processes of the committee, of the commission. Over the past five years, it's become clear that Dodd-Frank has fundamentally changed the role of the CFTC. The law has moved the a conferring principles-based regulator to a more adversarial rules-based regulator. As the permission changes, so must the rules that Congress sets for its operation. Today's legislation addresses these changes by making the CFTC more responsive and accountable to each commissioner and by assuring that each commissioner, not just the chairman, is given a greater voice on commission and staff activities. It also creates and defines the Office of uh, Chief Economist to provide every commissioner with objective economic data, data and analysis. And finally, one of the most important changes this bill makes is to require a meaningful quantitative quantification of the costs and benefits of a rule when it is first proposed. This analysis, done by the chief economist, will strengthen the rulemaking process and result in better regulations and safer markets. This small mandate on the economists at the CFTC will ensure that regulatory burdens are justified in the real world, not just in the pages of the, financial, of the Federal Register. Rules that reflect a, the, proper, the impact of a proper cost-benefit analysis will be better accepted by those that are regulated and, during the, and may result in less acrimony during the rules-making process. As I close, I would also like to thank my ranking member, David Scott. Over the past year and a half, we've examined these CFT issues, CFTC issues together, corroborated on legislation, hearings, and oversight. I'm pleased with the fruits of our labor, and I couldn't ask for a better partner on our subcommittee. The Customer Protection and End User Relief Act is common sense, bipartisan reform package. In it, we protect uh, customers and end users from overreach and make meaningful changes to the operation of the Commission. I urge my colleagues to support passage of the bill, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back, Jim.